Psalm number 127, and we're going to read the whole thing, all five verses. Hey, if you're at home, let's do something to honor God. Join with us as we stand together, as we read God's word, and uh, that'll be a blessing. And I think God takes notice of even little things that we do. He talks about the sparrow and every idle word. I think if somebody's about to read God's word in a corporate worship session like this, that uh, standing up, I think God takes note of that. We certainly can't brag to God. but Man, we could say thank you. He told the prophet, he said, he told Moses, take off your feet. When God was about to speak to him, he said, take your shoes off your feet. Place where you're standing is holy ground. Why? Because God's word was about to go forth. Well, if some dirt around Moses was holy. I think if we're going to read God's word, it's right and proper to make a big deal about it. Psalm 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. That's powerful. I want to preach on this thought. Stop worrying about your kids. Stop worrying about your kids. I promise you, worry doesn't do anybody any good. Stop worrying about your kids. Let's see what we can do about it. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. We thank you for the opportunity to open your word. And I pray that you'd bless the reading and preaching of it tonight. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. You can be seated. It is easier to say, stop worrying about your kids than it is to stop worrying about your kids. But worry does not do any good. When we see verse number one, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Can I tell you, if we want to have a successful family, if we want to build our house in a way where we, we get old and we don't have a ton of regrets, God's going to have to be involved in that. Uh, you can't listen to Oprah and Dr. Phil and Judge Judy and even leave it to Beaver. Oh, Andy Griffith. Father knows best. You may pick up a tip here or there. You may recognize some character traits here and there. But I'm telling you, we need to make sure that we are involving God in our home life. In our home life. And, and listen, we're all busy. We live in a busy time. I don't understand how country folk had time to do anything. They didn't have nary a microwave. They, they didn't have fast cars. They didn't have good roads. They, they didn't have cush jobs. Most of the people in America today just push paper. Very few people manufacture anything anymore. And everything's automated. Everything's there. Boy, you, you know, you'd have to ride a horse into town to go to the telegraph to do, 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 have somebody send a message, hope somebody could cipher it on the other end, and then deliver a message. So we're mad if somebody don't answer on the second ring. Well, older people are upset. Young people never answer. You can call somebody, let it ring six times. It rolls to voicemail. 30 seconds later, you get a text that says, you need something? <laughs> yeah, kiddo, I need you to answer your phone when I call. How about that? Like, Come on, boomer, all we do is text, you know? I'm like, you grounded. You're like, I ain't even your kid, you're still grounded. You, on your own, cannot build it strong enough. Satan 
the prince of the power of the air. And boy, think about what's floating through the airwaves today. Think about everything that comes through the phone signals and the interwebs and the satellites. It's overwhelming when you begin to think about it. Just smut on television. Stuff on regular television with no warnings. Stuff that used to, when, when a bunch of us were kids, man, I sound like an old guy. That would have been R-rated. It would have never been on anything regular, just broadcast television you weren't paying for and getting warned about. And our kids are just, they hear that stuff over and over on the television, in music. Just the internet stuff. The internet is, man, it is landmines everywhere. You, the things that some people think are funny are just not very funny. I like the second half of the verse. It says, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Do you know you cannot build your home strong enough to protect it yourself? It says, except the Lord keep the city. You can have all the watchmen you want to. Oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do... No, I mean, listen, we have kids. So we have parental protections on any devices. We have timers that turn them off and turn them back on. Uh, we have settings. We have things where, you know, I say we, my, my wife can go on and see, you know, keystrokes and where, where they're going and what they're looking at and who they're talking to and who's talking to them and what they're saying and all that kind of stuff that kids hate. But I'm telling you, kids need. Because, you know, mom and dad just looking around, you know, we're watching for bad guys. You know, it is insane today. You know, we grew up in a day and age where if you locked the door, you were pretty protected. Nowadays, you can lock the door, put an alarm sign out there, check to make sure you got one in the chamber, put that right next to your bed, and spend all night with one ear open, listening for every sound. And meanwhile, the enemy comes right in through devices, Wi-Fi's, interwebbing. People texting, sexting, bringing nonsense. Every now and again, the local police will gather in our parking lot. And it's always weird when they do, because you're going, man, is this the day? Is this what? What did I preach last Sunday? What? Are we? This is the one? Surely it wasn't that bad, you know? We only had one family quit last week. It wasn't five, you know, and now the police are here. What are we doing? You know, and it's, uh, it's just crazy. So, you know, you're like, what in the world's going on? So every once in a while I'll go out there and be like, hey, guys, y'all need a bottle of water or something? And they're like, no. And, and we know a couple of them. And they'll tell us, no, there's a guy we got a warrant. And, you know, and, and our city has, has a, apparently one officer in his mid-20s that looks like a teenager. And, uh, and so he'll go in. Looks, looks like he's probably 11 or 12. That, that's just weird. I think he has a note from his mom saying he's allowed to be a police officer here in the city. And, and so they'll, uh, but he'll go online and just be a kid, just trying to play games and chat it up with other kids. And some pervert pretending to be 13, pretending to be 15, come online. Next thing you know, they're supposed to meet up at a park. They, they've been invited over to their house. And they've already, you know, they know this, is, this guy's bad news. So they'll gather in our parking lot and get all ready, and they go over there with a show of force and pull perverts out and, you know, and, and hey, thank God for it. Thank God for it. But mom and daddy, I don't care what kind of protections we set up on the interwebs at our house and on a device. We set up all that stuff, and then we pray. We set up that, th that stuff, and we're diligent about watching but it doesn't do any good for us to sit, oh, woe is me. No, woe ain't you. What, what are you worried about? You can't do nothing about it. It ain't time to be worried. It's time to be diligent. It's time to be on the move. It's time to take care of business. But there ain't no business getting done if God's not involved. Except the Lord build the house. Except the uh, Lord keep the city. 
Ain't nothing we can do. No amount of worry, no amount of diligence is going to help. I'm telling you, we need to pray over our kids. We need to pray with our kids. We're busy people. We're on the move all the time. But six days a week, we do try to gather around the dinner table. You say, six days a week? Wifey likes date night. We throw them to the wolves that night, and then we just head on. No. <laughs> no, we have somebody come over and sit with the kids and make sure they don't kill one another and, unless they need to be killed. And then, and then, you know, it's whatever happens. It's what you're getting paid for. And so we, we go out on date night. But six nights a week, we try to gather around the dinner table and have a little normalcy and look at their faces. Not some device, you know. Put the vices away. Eat your chicken, son. Eat your spaghetti. And then we talk. We just, and we pray. We pray over our meal. Pray for our family. We pray for the missionaries. Pray for other stuff that's going on. But we just, we have to have God involved. Pray for our family every day. You go, why are you worried about them? It doesn't do any good to worry. I'm concerned, but worrying ain't enough. There's a lot of people talking about, I worry about my kids. Well, you worried about them three months ago. What have we done? What have we done? Do you know sometimes you have to hurt your kids' feelings? There are some parents that lived in South Irving that should have done a better job with their kids by telling me to go away. By telling me to go away. Because I was a bad influence. There were some kids my parents should have told to go away. Listen, I know your kids get mad at you. But I'd rather you save them from a bunch of heartache. It's okay if they get mad at you. God didn't call you to be your kid's best friend. Hush that noise up. That's foolishness. God didn't call you to be their best friend. He gave you to be a daddy. He gave you to be a mama. Why don't you parent them and not, not be... Try to be their best friends. Best friends? No, they need somebody just as dumb as they are to be their best friends. You're supposed to be the smart one in this thing. You're supposed to be the one that takes care. You're the one that's supposed to see the trouble coming. And every once in a while, you just got to stomp your foot and yeah, get rid of somebody. Just stomp your foot and run them off. We always tell our kids... We'll never tell you who you're going to marry, but you've got to give us first right of refusal. We're going to take it whether they, you know, give it to us or not. We want them to get married. That'd just be weird if they didn't. But we want them to get married to the right way. I don't want them to have to get married two or three times. We ain't going to tell them who they need to marry. But bless God, as parents, we ought to be able to tell them who they can't marry. And, and you've got to be bold in that thing. There, I know stories right now that would be inappropriate to tell because of protecting the innocent. But I know some people that are ooh, some doozies that somebody should have stomped their feet and ran somebody off. Would have saved a ton of heartache. Look at verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. It, it's vain. It, it's no. What are you doing? You can't just get them to eat the bread of sorrows and oh, I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about it. You better have a plan. And by the way, the Bible gives us a plan. Taking care of, train up a child in the way he should go. Well, but they don't like that Sunday school teacher. I, I didn't see that caveat anywhere in here. Train up that child in the way he should go. Unless he don't like a Sunday school teacher? Mom, I'll be honest with you. Daddy, I'll be honest with you. Your kid probably don't like you half the time. If you're doing it right. Training ain't pleasant. Train, have you ever tried to train an animal? Sometimes it gets ugly. You've got to tell them no, down. One of the first things we ever had to learn. And we, we, we got a dog. We rescued one. He's done abused and everything. We named him Nicodemus because he came to us secretly at night. We had Operation Crime Dog. Some dude at work 
at the pharmacy. He's talking about, he goes, hey, Grice, when are you going to get a dog? I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a German Shepherd. I mean, good, we know a breeder out here. Breeder? It's a real pretty black lab over here. It's like, black lab? Kind of like labs. Where'd you get him? I hadn't got him yet. I'm going to steal him tonight and bring him to your house. said, we've been pouring food and water through the fence. Had nobody checked on him in weeks. He's on a six-foot chain, and it's tied four foot high. He's just wearing a rut in the ground, and he's dumb, so he knocks over his water. And we have to go out there, and my wife's going out there like six times a day, putting water through the hose, through the fence. So he stole that dog and brought him to us. He was dumb as a box of hammers. So we, the city had some kind of dog training thing in the basement of City Hall. We went over there and went down to the basement and some big old gruff lady, looked like a linebacker for the Cowboys, <laughs> came out and taught us, how to, taught us how to train our dog. And we had to do this thing. It was terrible. I made my wife do it. I hated it. It's called control down. Ain't that a blessing? You know what puppies like to do? Not down. Man, you had to hold him there and just make him stay. He'd try to get up and you hold him. He'd start crying and whining and yelping. And you're like, hush now, hush. And you hold him. You don't hurt him, but you, you don't, you know, and you train him. And then you got one of those uh, collars. Most people don't like them. But they got them little hooks that come back in all the way around his neck. And it wasn't tight. If he'd do what he told, it wouldn't hurt. And every once in a while, you know, you're trying to teach him to heal, heal. You walk along and pop. That dog didn't like that. But it made him do right. Kind of like when you spank your kid, tell him no, tell, put him in a corner. All that stuff is probably illegal nowadays. Train, training ain't now. You ever tried to train a tree? Got a little baby tree? That thing starts leaning over. You're like, nope. What do you do? You put a stake in the ground. You tie it off. Got to get a rubber hose on there so you don't kill it. Put a piece of hose on it and you, you train it. It, it. You put pressure on it. You, you, you put restraints on it and you put pressure on it to get it to grow up like it should. It's for its own good. That's what parents do. We put restraints on our kids. We put pressure on our children so they'll grow up like they should. And no, they don't like it. They don't like getting told no any more than I do. I hate getting told no. If I can talk myself out of it, I won't get told no. As you get older, you try to figure that stuff out. It doesn't do any good to worry. It, it's vain. You can worry all you want to. While you're sitting around doing nothing, Satan is stealing your children away. He's clouding their mind. He's messing with their heart. He's toying with their affections. He's using their eye holes and their ear holes. Which, but nowadays you can't hear. They got something hanging out of here. Looks like they got a, you know, they never hear you anyway. Now they wear, used to people would wear stuff in their ear so they could hear better. Now people wear stuff in their ear and they can't hear nothing in the room. And it ain't all music from the last singing group that came through the church. But worrying ain't going to get it done. We're worrying while Satan's warring. You know, it, sitting around worrying and not having a plan and not being aggressive concerning your children is like walking down the street and bombs are going off all around you. You're going, man, look at that. That's weird. It's fireworks. No, you're under attack. And you see the damage, you see that you hear the explosions, you see what's going on, you see the effects, and the simple pass on and are punished. We see our kids getting an attitude, we see our kids struggling, we see our kids having problems. And then we just look past our kids because they're our kids. It's y'all's kids that are having a problem. Think about where your kids came from. Look at verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, 
The fruit of the womb is his reward. God gave you your children. You are responsible for what God has given you. You're responsible for that. We've said things that I thought, man, that was pretty good. You get after one of your kids and they're like, why, why, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? I'm like, boy, I love you and I want other people to love you too. And you're making it hard. I thought, man, that's pretty good. They're, they're from God, but listen, God has an intended purpose for them. You know what's sad? Because Americans get this wrong, Christians get this wrong. Mom and dad get saved. And they do pretty good. They get excited. And they go to church. But then after a while, the excitement wears off. They have kids. They still go to church. But where they used to, they would never say anything negative about church brethren. They would never say anything negative about the people of God. It wouldn't even cross their mind. Suddenly, you start raising a family, and you get a critical spirit. So-and-so did that. Who does the preacher think he is? By the way, the preacher knows who he is. I have a mirror, and I see, unfortunately, sometimes I still see the old, old, old me. Preacher knows who he is. But me knowing who I am does not change the word of God. Verse 4 says, As arrows in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of youth, of the youth. Arrows. The powerful weapon of the day. They can go further than you can go. But listen, only if they're straight and only if they're strong. Arrows. In the hand of a mighty man. I mean, just, you would not want to get shot with an arrow. I would almost rather get shot with a gun than to get shot with a nasty arrow. With a gun, I'm, I don't know. I don't want to get shot. I hope, if I ever get shot, I hope they're a good shot, you know. I'm a big target. Don't, don't just wing me or something. Don't hurt me. If you don't kill me, kill me. Don't hurt me. Good night. That's ridiculous. But as arrows, mighty weapons, straight, strong, true, You know, if you have a weapon and you look down, let's just keep it right here. If you look, look at an arrow and you aim right down that shaft and it doesn't fly where it's supposed to go, something's wrong. Either you're doing something wrong or there's something wrong with that arrow. Maybe them feathers aren't right. Maybe the head's not right. Usually the head ought, head ain't right. That's the problem, you know, with kids. It ain't, it ain't right in the head. And uh, so you got to figure out what's wrong. God gave you children to make you stronger, to make your family stronger, to make your family more formidable. To make your family more potent in the fight against Satan. For years and years, there was just Mrs. Grice and I. And we served the Lord and we did what we were told. If a preacher asked us to do something, I didn't go, why? I, don't, I just did it, man. I just did it. I just figured if somebody asked me to do something, I'd do it. I went where I was told to go. I talked to who I was supposed to talk to. I cleaned what I was supposed to clean. I cooked what I was supposed to cook. Back in the day, I climbed what I was supposed to climb until I went, this label here says uh, weight limit. And I, can I hold the ladder while somebody else climbs? You know, I ain't afraid of heights. I'm afraid of falling. And 
hey man, we just did what we were told. Play the piano, dress as a clown, be a secretary, just do. We just did. Work with the children, work with the youth, preach at a nursing home, go to Bible college. Urgh, rage. We just did it. We always prayed for children. Wouldn't it be a shame if we didn't raise our kids right? And because we had kids, we had to do less for the Lord? There's six of us. We ought to be able to triple our efforts. We ought to do so much more. We have a big family. If we're not careful, oh, and listen, it's happened. Our confession. Oh, you know, we got so many kids. It's hard. There ain't nothing in here about excuses. Let's do something. You know, Brother Graham, I don't mean to embarrass him. Brother Graham served the Lord for the last 132 years. I went to Bible college with one of his kids. One of his kiddos sitting next to him in church tonight. One of them's down in Guatemala as a missionary. Another one's up in Appleton, Wisconsin as a pastor. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you think, man, if you have four or five kids, maybe one of them going to serve the Lord and Maybe one, one or two of them something. I mean, hey, our prayer ought to be that every single one of them. We know, I mean, listen, people make their choices. We're, we're, we, I believe in you know, priesthood of the believer. I, I believe in soul liberty. I, you do what you want to do. Just be willing to pay the consequences. My prayer is certainly, I, I'm not calling my kids to preach. I've never said, yeah, daddy's little preachers, daddy's little preachers. The last thing I want is for one of my kids to do something they think I want them to do instead of doing what God wants them to do. Amen. Well, I wouldn't want God want them to be a preacher. I don't know. Maybe he wants them to be an electrician. I hope he has one of them work for the airlines. <laughs> for those friends and family tickets are a blessing, man. I'm telling you. I, I don't know what God wants my kids to do, but I want it to be what God wants my kids to do. Because here's the deal. I want them in the right gate at the right time when the enemy comes. Because the Bible says that as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, that it, they'll, listen, so are the children of the youth. Happy at the man that hath his quiver full of them, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Talk about like arrows, arrows say a lot. It wouldn't take much if I was walking through a gate, if I see a bunch of arrows aimed at me to go wrong gate. I'll go cause problems somewhere else. Worrying's not going to get it done. Worry doesn't fix a thing. Work changes things. So we need to pray and work and work and pray. I heard somebody say a long time ago, I don't know who quoted, I hope it was somebody who has all good doctrine. Usually somebody's off on a couple of things. We can't all be perfect in our doctrine. But I heard somebody say one time, we need to work as though it all depends on us and pray because it all depends on God. To pray and then do nothing would be an insult to God. To try to do a bunch of work without praying is insanity work. We need to train them, teach them, make sure that our kids know what they're doing. Now, I've been very pleased so far, uh, our children and some of our young people from our church, when they enter into Bible college, um, our children, do, our, our people here from our church, they do very well, include, including our children. We've had two that have done a little Bible college, and, uh, and, and they've, done, they've done extremely well. They've not struggled. 
We have several people from our church that have gone to Bible college and they're not struggling. Nobody is. It's because we have a preaching, teaching church. And we teach. One of my boys gave me a hard time one time. I, I, was, I was hollering from office to office. And I was like, Angela, grab that, those three lessons on Luke 2, on the birth of Christ, and uh, strip the headings off of them and take Sunday school off and put life of Christ on there. One of my boys goes, you're, you're teaching Sunday school at the Bible college? I was like, no, I ain't teaching no Sunday school at the Bible college. I teach Bible college at the Bible college. But I also teach Bible college in Sunday school. Amen. You go through our Sunday school program, you're going to breeze through Bible college. It's going to be a refresher course. Because we're told that we're supposed to teach everything. We're supposed to teach the whole counsel of God. Well, for us to get that done, we're going to have to teach the whole Bible. So when you go to Bible college, you're like, we teach the whole Bible. You're like, you ought to be right at home. Working, teaching, training. It takes work and it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to navigate through the trials. Sometimes people are like, well, when I was a kid, and I, guilty. Boy, when I was a kid, I was driving on the streets when I was 13. I almost got kicked out of driver's ed because I was driving myself to driver's ed by myself. Pull up, throw the emergency brake on, put the car in gear. You got out, some lady goes, isn't he in your class? The boy's like, you're in my class, right? I was like, yeah. She, he is not supposed to be driving by. I thought she was going to carry me and go and tell, tell the instructor I was going to get kicked out of school. Whatever, man. One of the driving instructors let me at night go fuel up the cars with him. He's like, it's my turn to fill up all the cars. There's eight of them. Everybody's gone. Get in that Camaro and follow me. <laughs> okay. So we drive over there and he's like, fill them up at the same time, man. We can get done fast. I got things to do. You know, he's like, he, was, he should have got fired. And so <laughs> it wasn't that far. But, you know, we tell our kids there, I was driving at 13. I was, I was doing this. I was managing money. I was taking care of business. Our kids don't live in that same world. They're navigating stuff we don't even comprehend day. I don't comprehend everything our kids are going through. See, we can't, rate, we can't expect them to do what we do. They live in a different world than we live in. They don't live way out in the country. The population, even in our same cities, is probably four or five times what it was when we were kids. It's just different. It's more crowded. It's faster. It's more distracting. Uh, you know what? When I was driving when I was 13, I didn't have v -v -v in my pocket. I didn't have to answer four texts at the red light. I didn't have that stuff. So we have to have wisdom to help our children navigate this ever-changing and very dangerous world that we live in. Satan's no different than he's ever been. He just has a lot more tools at his disposal today. And so we need to have wisdom. So we work, constant work, and we ask God for wisdom to navigate through the trials. And then number three, war Readiness. War readiness. Our children need to know how to fight spiritual battles. They need to cope. They need to, know how, they need to have coping skills. Coping skills is, listen, this whole thing's got people, suicides are, are right now go, running rampant. People are stressed out. I was reading uh, somebody that, that, you know, we know very well. They were talking about uh, one of their kids, their teacher, did a bunch of extra work because during this shutdown in school, their kid who had been doing pretty well in school just freaked out. He was like scared. Every time they turned on the TV, it's Rona this and Rona that. And they can't go outside. You can't get close. You got to wear a mask. You got to do this. You got to do that. This is closed down. These people are out of work. Daddy got laid off. All these terrible things happening. That's a lot for kids to have to, to bear up to. There's grown-ups that are huddled in a corner crying over this stuff. Kids don't know how to deal with all that. You've got to teach them how to shake it off. War readiness. Hey, when you're training a soldier, when you're training a soldier, there is a process. It requires a lot of yelling, 
a lot of threatening. Uh, it's got to do a little breaking them down so you can build them back up. And you've got to teach them to be fearless. Because it could be that your kid is going to be on a battlefield behind a wall with people shooting at them and you ain't got nothing to do but stand up and charge. And that's why they take them young. Guys, my age, like, I ain't going nowhere. You better call in an airstrike. My stepdad done told me if they couldn't get up, they just hold their hands up and just spray and pray. Brrr, hope that hit somebody. Whew, if not, I'll reload here and shoot somebody else in a minute, you know. But they get young kids because they can. Young people can be warriors. David was a warrior. Daniel was a fighter. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they stood up to tyranny. And our children are going to have to fight tyranny. We need to be raising young soldiers who when the bullets are whizzing around their head and others are falling to the wayside, they can stand up with their weapon in their hand and charge, charge, charge forward for the cause of Christ. You, I don't want my kid to be a soldier. Verse 3 says you got your kids from the Lord. Verse 4 says they are weapons. And verse 5 says they have a job to do. It's your job, mom and daddy, to make sure they're straight, to make sure they're strong, and to make sure like arrows in the hands of a mighty man, they could deal with the enemy in the gate, and the enemy is in the gate! We're living in strange days. Don't tell me you're worried about your kids. Tell me what you're doing to get your kids ready for the battle ahead. Tell me that you recognize that your children are a gift from God and you are equipping them to do God's will. Worry ain't going to help anything. Worry is a waste of time. Worry is for the weak. Worry is for the weak. Worry is for quitters. And there's no crown for quitters. You sit around and dwell on the negative and you will quit on God. And you'll show your kids to quit on God. But so and so hurt my feet. Man up! Put on your big girl culottes and let's get this done. We are in a battle against evil. All that music we was warning you about, telling you it wasn't no good, telling you it was ungodly. Well, another one of those perverts fell to the wayside this week and decided he didn't believe in God. You know why? Because he's a little sissy girl. Of course he didn't believe in God. He's effeminate. Probably had unnatural affection. Of course he don't believe in God. You can look at his music and he didn't tell he didn't believe in God. So now he's there and our kids, oh yeah, oh it's that group, it's that group. Puke, vomit on that group. They don't know nothing. Their songs aren't full of doctrine. Songs are just full of breathy, I love you stuff. It could be to God or to, be a, to a girlfriend or something. Or in some of them's case, their boyfriend. And then they, they get your kids tapping their toe to that stuff, jamming out to that stuff. And then they're on, online talking about, I don't believe in God anymore. Well, ain't that something? You better be careful who your kids are trying to idolize. Mom and daddy, that's part of the work. That's part of the work. We're trying to raise warriors. You say, but my baby ain't ready. He'll never be ready if you don't get him ready. Our kids need to know doctrine so when they hear some stinking nonsense, they know it's not right. Our kids need to know the Word of God so when they hear it misapplied and uh, 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 misquoted, they know it's not right. Our kids need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
Don't talk to me about worry. That's vain. See, you just thought all the Psalms were about green pastures and still waters. No, this is about if you don't get God involved in your family, you're going to be in trouble. You and your kids are going to get destroyed is what's going to happen. And Satan ain't taking it. Well, oh, hold on. I didn't know. I wasn't ready. No. When the war comes to you, you'd be, better be ready to fight. There are spiritual battles. And weak, worried, so-called believers are falling to the wayside all around us. Don't worry about your kids. Prepare your kids. Let's all stand tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Lord, there's a lot going on. And not one part of it caught you off guard. Help us, Lord, to be found faithful. To train our people to be faithful. Every one of our kids, our nieces, nephews, cousins, the neighbor's kids, whoever. We need more of us. But more importantly than that, we need more of you. We need your spirit to fill us, your word to encourage us, and your power to surround us. Father, please, I pray that you'd help us as family members, as parents to be dedicated to raising our kids and children to realize their important role in God's plan. We're trying to build a house. We're trying to let God build a house. And it's for them to become strong and be secure in the word. Father, would you help us all to consider where we're at and get us to the next level. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name.